Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Aviation PLC 2022 Financial Year Results and Investor Update Conference Call. My name is Mark, and I'll be your conference moderator for today. Throughout this recorded presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged and can be submitted at any time using the Q&A tab situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Just simply type in your questions at any time and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself. However, the company review all questions submitted today and publish responses where it's appropriate to do so. Before we begin, we would like to submit the following poll. And if you give that your kind of attention, I'm sure the company would be most grateful. I'd now like to hand over to Duncan Scott, Group General Counsel. Good afternoon. Thank you and good afternoon to everyone. Uh, today, on 29th of September, Evasion published its unaudited financial results for the financial year ended 30th of June 2022. A copy of our earnings release is available on our website at www.evasion.net. This conference call is being webcast and recorded, and the webcast will be available for replay on our website. Please note that certain statements in this conference call, including answers to your questions, are forward-looking statements including without limitation statements regarding our future operations and performance revenues, operating expenses, other income and expense items. These statements and any projection as to the company's future performance represent management's estimate of future results and speak only as of today, 29th of September 2022. These estimates involve risk and uncertainties that could cause actual results to differ materially from expectations. Further information on the factors and risks that may affect Innovation's business are included in Innovation's regulatory announcements from time to time, including its annual report and half-year results announcements. Innovation assumes no obligation to update any forward-looking statements or information in light of new information or future events. Unauthorised recording of this conference call is not permitted. I will now hand over to Executive Chairman Jeff Chatfield. Thank you um, very much for your time. In the year ended 30 June 2022, Ovation has returned to profitability. Increased net asset value per share, maintained liquidity, lowered net debt, and developed its new CO2 strategy. The company is positioned to execute its business strategy as the aviation sector recovers from the pandemic. There has been a significant recent recovery in passenger numbers in the airline industry. The company is optimistic about a future for the leasing industry, characterised by high demand for aircraft as the global, global fleet transitions to low CO2 technology in the coming years. Fleet utilisation has improved as unused aircraft have been transitioned. Significant impacts of airline insolvencies and restructurings have mostly been reflected in previous periods and distributions creditors from these insolvencies are now being received. <coughs> the company is in, seeing increasing levels of interest from airlines to buy or lease aircraft at sustainable lease rates. Senior willings, lenders willing to lend against, against aircraft assets. These factors confirm the emergence of an industry from the pandemic. The company's strategy will be to focus on leasing modern low CO2 emissions fuel efficient aircraft in the future. Ovation is supportive of the aviation industry's goal of becoming more sustainable through a transition to new technology, more fuel efficient aircraft engine and the use of sustainable aviation fuel. The company will position itself for to return to growth through opportunistic trading and deliveries from its order book in the post pandemic environment. As at 30 June, the company had 39 aircraft in the fleet, serving 17 different customers in 14 countries. Ovation owns regional narrow body and twin aisle aircraft. The fleet is split 17% wide body, 52% narrow body, and 31% turboprop by value. The aircraft fleet has a 5.6 year weighted average age and a 5.7 year weighted average remaining lease term. Innovation has total assets in excess of $1.2 billion. Attached to that fleet is $504, sorry, $507 million in unearned contracted lease receivables from existing operating leases and a further $61 million in finance lease receivables. That's over six, uh, $568 million in receivables and remaining leases 
with which to repay debt. And at that point, on average, the fleet will still be less than halfway through its life. The company has begun positioning itself for the eventual transition of the industry with aircraft using 100% sustainable, sustainable aviation fuel to produce low CO2 emissions on a net basis. Low CO2 emissions will advantage airlines in terms of taxes and government regulation. The company is engaged in a number of campaigns driven by the airlines wanting to increase and renew their fleets for the delivery of new aircraft. Ovation's fleet at 30 June is dominated by fuel efficient regional and narrow body aircraft. It's these sectors that are fastest in the return to service from the pandemic. 83% of Ovation's fleet is focused on regional and domestic travel, which is close to returning to 2019 pre COVID levels. Ovation believes newer aircraft carry a lower risk of obsolescence provide greater long-term cash flow to service debt through long-term leases, and importantly, will continue to deliver improvements in emissions and sustainability in the airline sector as it moves to a carbon neutral future. Ovation holds orders for two aircraft and purchase rights for 28 ATR 72600 aircraft. This access to new aircraft represents a growth asset that has increased in value during the financial period as customer demand drives airlines to increase capacity and provides investors with a visible pathway to Ovation's future growth. Ovation is returning to a high level of operational efficiency, which simply means that a high percentage of the fleet is generating rent. Today, Ovation has four unutilised aircraft as a result of repositioning or selling 17 of the 21 aircraft that we returned from customers during the pandemic. We have strong interest in the remaining aircraft, and our expectation is that we will sell or lease these remaining unutilised aircraft in the short term. Ovation has reviewed the values of aircraft in the fleet and revised some of the, reversed some of the impairment and increased the overall value of the fleet. The increase in valuation only represents a small recovery of the impairment taken during the, during the pandemic. As the world continues to emerge from the pandemic, demand for aircraft is expected to continue increasing. As airline travel continues to gain strength, improvement in lease rates may lead to further increases in aircraft value in the future. The next slide shows airline customers. Today, we have 17 customers in 14 countries. Vation's customers include five flag carriers. These flag carrier airlines appear to have been more resilient as they typically receive support and continue to service domestic routes as countries have, removed, have moved beyond the peak of the pandemic. Domestic travel has recovered faster than international air travel. It is important to note Ovation's geographical spread of customers of the pandemic has impacted different areas at different times. Around two thirds of Ovation's customers by revenue are located in Asia with the remainder in Europe, where our largest customer, Air Baltic, has been performing well. The Powell restructuring plan became effective on 31st of December 21. Pursuant to the restructuring plan, Powell has retained a Boeing 777-300ER aircraft on lease from Ovation in accordance with the plan. The lease will, for this aircraft will continue until the scheduled original scheduled termination date. Powell has met its commitments under the restructuring agreement and continues to meet the ongoing lease terms. As we've been able to conserve the majority of our customers, fleet, team and business model through the pandemic, we believe Ovation's business is largely intact. Ovation has no and never has had any direct exposure to Russia or any Russian airline. Ovation is currently not aware of any sanctions resulting from the invasion of Ukraine that will impact the company. Ovation has a focus on new or young aircraft and therefore is a natural seller of midlife aircraft. I'll now hand over to Richard to run through the FY22 results. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, the next uh, few slides of the pre presentation provide a summary of um, 
our FY22 financial results. Further detail is included in today's stock exchange announcement, which is also available on the company's website. On to the financial uh, 22 summary. During the fin financial period, Ovation generated a total income of $116.4 million with revenue of $112.2 million. Operating profit saw a dramatic turnaround to $90.2 million um, profit from a loss of $62.7 million in 2020, 20, 2021. Profit before tax, before non-cash loan modification charges saw a $150 million turnaround to $34.9 million from a loss last year of $120.5 million. We have highlighted profit before tax number pre these charges due to the material non-cash charges skewing the profit and loss as a result of loan modifications and their treatment under IFRS 9. The extension of the maturity date and other revisions to the terms and the conditions of the notes were accounted for as a substantial modification of the terms of a debt instrument in accordance with IFRS 9 which led to a non-cash gain being recognised of $50 million in the statement of profit loss in the year in last year, in the year ended 30 June 2021. Under IFRS 9, this gain is required to be amortised over the term of the extension of the notes. Investors should note that the current financial year ended 30 June 2022, amortisation of this gain led to a non-cash charge of $8.8 million being recognised as a finance expense. In addition to this, a further non-cash charge of $3.5 million was created when Ovation successfully extended the aircraft loan warehouse facility to 30 September 2026. As a result of this, total profit after tax of $17.1 million um, uh, was, was earned, uh, which is a significant turnaround from a loss of $84.9 million in the corresponding period last year. Total assets declined by 5% to $1.21 billion. However, net indebtedness was able to be reduced by 14% to $793 million, down from $923 million the previous year. Earnings per share uh, were 24.7 US cents for the period, up from a loss of 131.2 cents last year. NAV per share rose by 63% to £2.68 from a pound 64 a year ago. On to so the operational highlights. Uh, for the financial year 2022. The uh, company managed to sell five aircraft, including an Airbus A220, an, Abus, uh, an Airbus A321, and three, three of the ex-Virgin Australia ATR-72 aircraft. Um, a further two ATR-72 aircraft were returned and uh, um, are in the process of being sold with completion next month. Uh, two aircraft leases were extended with heavy lift and a third ATR-72 um, was leased to heavy lift as well. The Pell restructuring was completed with the airline retaining the Boeing 777-300ER, um, as Jeff just mentioned, um, and, the next, and another ex-Virgin Australia ATR-72 was leased with uh, the delivery to a new customer occurring this month. Uh, another lease on an Airbus A320 was extended by 44 uh, months with uh, EasyJet. Uh, a couple of aircraft transitions as well. Boeing 737 was repossessed and we're remarketing that aircraft now. And Air Airbus A320 was returned and that has been transitioned already to a new customer. And an ex-Golden uh, Myanmar ATR-72 aircraft was recovered and is being transitioned uh, to a new customer with expected completion next month. In addition to this, the um, as I mentioned, the aircraft warehouse loan facility maturity date was extended to 30 September 2026. On the following slide, we have a, a, a quick debt analysis um, on, our, on our debt position, which has improved um, significantly over the past year. Total loans and borrow borrowings, current and non-current, dropped by 13% to $828 million from $948 million a year ago. Net indebtedness has declined by almost $130 million since 30 June 2021 to $793 million, down from $923 million. There was an increase in the weighted average cost of the group's secured debt facilities to 4%, up from 3.9% as a result of repayment of some lower cost debt that increased the number of unencumbered aircraft in the fleet in the period. The weighted average cost of debt for the company increased to 5.7%. At the end of the year, 89% of total debt was at fixed or hedged interest rates. Ovation's net 
debt to assets ratio improved significantly to 65.1% over the past year from 73.9%. And the chart at the bottom of the page shows the evolution of the group's cost of debt over the past nine years. In the next slide, we provided um, some key ratios uh, for, for a comparative basis. The net asset value per share saw a significant increase of 45% to $3.27 from $2.26 last year. That's in US dollars. As a result of the weakening of the pound against the greenback, this saw the NAV per share in pounds increase 63% to £2.68 from £1.64. As of the date of this release, with the pound weakening further since the end of the financial year, measured at today's exchange rates, the NAV per share approximates £3.06. This is important as uh, the US dollar is ovation's functional currency as most aircraft leasing transactions purchases and sales and lease agreements are in US dollars. Lease yields decreased slightly to 9.6% from 10.3%. Administrative expenses on a cash basis, excluding warrant expense, increased to 7.2% from 6.6%, but still um, by comparative standards in the industry quite low. Debt to equity saw a large improvement to 3.6 times from six times over the past year. And net debt over EBITDA saw a similar improvement to 7.6 times versus 12.5 times as at 30 June 2021. Debt to total assets dropped six, for, uh, to 68% from 73.9%. And EBITDA as a function of interest expense also improved to 1.9 times from 1.4 times a year ago. The next slide would provide a summary of uh, Ovation's li liquidity position. And the maintenance of that uh, liquidity position has been Ovation's key focus during the pandemic, as we've noted a number of times in, the, in these past uh, conference calls. Cash has been preserved over the past couple of years during a period of extreme uncertainty when a significant proportion of the fleet was unutilised and the remaining airline customer debtors were building. This was a difficult exercise and we are now fortunate that it will not require the focus and attention it has as the industry continues to return to more positive operational conditions. The unsecured bonds have a maturity date of 31 October 2026 and are, and are callable at any time. Novation has made an opportunistic repurchase of the unsecured bonds just after the completion of the financial year, following um, the direct approach from a bondholder. Cash collections are returning to normal uh, with uh, the cash collection rate running at 108% for the year, ended 30 June 2022, which is a significant improvement over the last financial year where the uh, cash collection rate was 67%. The company also has three unencumbered aircraft as at 30 June. Liquidity is expected to continue to improve in the first half of the new financial year, beginning with the completion of the sales of two ex-Logan Air, Air ATR aircraft, and then in the second half with regular um, significant repayments of some of the deferred rent uh, from the pandemic period. Other positive cash flows um, in, uh, can potentially include further aircraft sales, which uh, uh, could include any of the um, unutilised aircraft being the Boeing 737 and the two ATRs that we are currently remarketing, collections of debtors from customers, the opportunity to re refinance ex existing aircraft in the fleet, and collections from the Virgin Australia insolvency and potential realisation of the Philippine Airlines shares um, that we hold. Ovation's claim against Virgin Australia has been adjudicated by the trustee of the Creditors Trust in the sum of 101.4 million Australian dollars. Ovation was notified of an initial distribution from the Creditors Trust of 5.4 cents in the dollar on 15 September 2022 in respect of the claim. A further distribution based on funds withheld by the trustee is also expected. And in addition to this, further funds may be made available to creditors should Virgin Australia meet performance targets in the financial year ended 30 June 2023. The potential total of these additional distributions is estimated to be in the range of one to two cents in the dollar. On to the next slide, which talks, which shows our liability structure and loan maturities. On this slide, um, uh, we show over the coming years, uh, the loan maturities. Uh, the, loan, the secured debt loan maturities in blue match the underlying lease terms of aircraft and obviously are manageable and will pay themselves off. The orange uh, maturity represents uh, aircraft uh, warehouse loan facility, which Ovation successfully extended out to 30 September 2026. 
as such, there is no cash crunch as as, as a result of the se of of senior debt coming as a result of the loan amortization restructuring Ovation has negotiated with senior lenders as part of our COVID-19 um, coping strategy. There is also a long pathway to maturity of the unsecured bonds represented in green out to October 2026. Loan maturities are typically aligned with lease terms and with a long average lease duration um, of 5.7 years, most of Ovation's senior debt, which makes up close to 60% of total um, uh, debt, has significant duration. Ovation confirms that it is current with all payments to secured lenders. Ovation either complies with or has received waivers with all senior bank loan covenants. Ovation is in discussions with senior lenders to permanently amend or remove some covenants that no longer reflect the, cap the current capital structure. I'll hand back to Jeff for the final couple of, uh, couple of slides that talk about the company's strategy and pathway forward. Thank you. Richard, Ovation's strategy during COVID was to reserve liquidity and repositional sell aircraft returned from customers as, it, as they occurred, which was, has basically been successful. The implementation of this strategy has enabled the company to materially lower net indebtedness, support our customers' survival, maintain adequate liquidity and keep the core business intact. Now that the industry is returning positively with opportunities increasing, the company will transition to into a more forward-looking strategy that is intended to return the company to the growth and profitability experienced pre-COVID. The return of air travel and the confirmation of passenger demand around the world is surprised to the upside in the past couple of months. This combined with the expected further reduction in unutilised aircraft represents an opportunity for Ovation and its investors to focus on the future rather than the recent history of having to react to the problems and obstacles inflicted by the pandemic. We have developed a very sensible low CO2 strategy for the company going forward. So in 23, the focus is to position, transition, sell, place the last three unutilised aircraft, maintain a focus on liquidity. Um, there is significant opportunities around the ATR-72 order book with the new Pratt & Whitney 127XT engines. Um, the commercial team is now able to focus on the new opportunities for the order book rather than just uh, transitioning repossessed aircraft. And so clearly um, the team will be able to focus on new customers rather than um, repossessing and, and transitioning aircraft. The strategy, this is very important, very important. Um, the company's got to focus on low CO2 emission aircraft. So there's low CO2 fuel efficient aircraft becoming available in all types. But the first one that's been successful is the ATR-72 where we have seen one of our customers demonstrate um, commercial aircraft flying on 100% sustainable aviation fuel. So gradually over years, we, ex we expect that we'll trade out of older aircraft types and focus on aircraft types such as the, the NEOs and the A220 series in addition to the ATR-72. Uh, with the recently announced new generation engines. And I should make it plain that all of our order book, all of our, the orders for those aircraft in future, all have the, the new um, the new engines, the PW127XT, which is very important because the engine itself provides a 20% lower maintenance cost, extended time on wing, 3% lower fuel consumption, 5% more power than the current engine. The manufacturer expects that the PW127XT engine will be certified to operate with 100% sustainable aviation fuel in the near term. With, when using sustainable aviation fuel, net emissions of CO2 are reduced by 80%, which is very important because obviously regulations and governments are forcing low CO2 operations on, on airlines. 
Ovation supports and is committed to the eventual transition of the industry towards aircraft using 100% sustainable aviation fuel to produce low CO2 emissions on a net basis. Low CO2, low CO2 emissions will advantage airlines in terms of taxes, governments, costs, and are also key to providing a substantial, sustainable future for global aviation. So in conclusion, the disruption created by the COVID-19 pandemic is receding following the successful rollout of vaccines and, and other things. And this has supported the return to increased levels of air travel. This trend is evidence, evidenced in regional and domestic travel, regional and domestic travel passenger numbers, and is being followed by recovering international travel. The completion of the restructuring by Philippine Airlines, the payment of the initial distribution from Virgin and the extension of our aircraft warehouse facility resolved some of the key remaining issues generated by the pandemic. Vation is just set to emerge from the pandemic with a smaller fleet with higher levels of utilisation and a long time frame for the repayment of the company's unsecured notes and warehouse. Cash flow for operations continues to improve to normal as trading conditions, as to normal trading conditions as countries open up. Ovation's largest five customers, which make up almost 70% of the revenue, were current with or in compliance with repayment plans as of 30 June. Cash flows the remainder of the financial year will be boosted through the settlement of announced aircraft sales and expected further sales of unutilised aircraft, collections from insolvency proceedings relating to Virgin Australia, Philippine Airlines and collections of outstanding amounts related to rent deferral arrangements and the increase in receivables as a result of COVID-19. There are likely to be opportunities to buy aircraft from airlines and lessors looking to adjust or reduce their portfolio, which with Ovation is positioning itself to take advantage of in future years. Ovation is optimistic about the long-term opportunity for airline travel, particularly in the air, in the low, to, low CO2 turboprop and narrow body aircraft sectors. We as a management team to continue to support, believe in and align with the company and its investors. And I'll now hand over for the uh, Q&A session. That's great, Jeff. Thank you very much indeed for your presentation. And I'll bring up everybody's cameras. Um, uh, that's happening now. So thank you very much indeed. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please do continue to submit your questions using the Q&A tab situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. But just while the company take a few moments to review those questions submitted already, I'd like to remind you that a recording of this presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A, can be accessed via your Investor Meet company dashboard. Um, Jeff, as you can see, you've had a number of questions from investors throughout today's call. So thank you to everybody for your uh, for your engagement this afternoon. Maybe if I may, Jeff, hand back to you, if you could perhaps read out the questions and distribute them as appropriate, and I'll pick up from you at the end. Okay, well, we'll start with the results of the poll because they're interesting. Are you a shareholder of Ovation PLC? Well, 54% of you are, so I, I don't know what the rest are doing. Should Ovation's credit rating increase now that we've so, shown that we've survived COVID? 87% of you think we should. That's great. The interesting question is how much more would you pay to be zero to CO2 if you'd spent $500 on an air ticket? 65% of you say zero, 28% of you say $100, and 7% of you say $500. Um, the bad news is at today's prices, the real number's more likely to be $1,000. So that's why it's important that we have low CO2 engine so i said you know if only four of you four percent of you will pay uh sorry seven percent of you will pay five hundred dollars it's not a very good result so the q a uh we've got lots of questions so jake pre-submitted question historically evasion has approached in the past for sale of substantial portions of the fleet and indeed prior to COVID, evasion was reviewing a strategic review after being approached by a bona fide offerer. Given these substantial discounts NAV, Ovation has Ovation received expressions of interest in the company with substantial part of its fleet taken in recent months? Or is the general appetite for MA subdued? Well, we, the company receives 
uh, inbound inquiries from various investors of various qualities every couple of weeks, but they're not uh, generally um, well formed. And we, you know, that's why we have brokers and advisors. You know, those people come into our brokers and, and they deal with them and um, in the normal way. I, I, don't, I don't see a lot of M and A activity in this sector, um, given that COVID's only just finished and. Uh, people are sort of still working out what's going on, and there's a lot of volatility in the uh, in the financing markets. The second question: Would Jeff Chaff would or would I look forward to creating a new aircraft lease and coming from scratch again, or seek to have a secondary role within an enlarged group? Well, the answer is, um, Avation's doing super well now. It's super well positioned, so we don't need um, anything else. Question from Brandon. After COVID, I believe you converted one or two receivers from lessees into effectively term loans. In relation to these, could you detail how much of the current of this currently stands at when the repayments commence, the period over which these will be paid, and the monthly instalments? That's a question for Ian. Yeah, hi Brandon. Um, so the amount at 30th of June uh, outstanding on that that loan is 21 million dollars. Uh, the repayments will start in January 23 and continue over the 24 months until December 2024. Excellent. Phil asks, what is the company's ability to monetize power shares and what is the expected value? Ian? Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's no restrictions on us selling those um, power shares if we, we can find a, a market for them. Um, and the, the valuation... They do convert to listed shares. I think at some point, at, some point. at the moment, they're, they're still unlisted. So, I mean, our valuation is based on the listed holding company, um, and, and we value the shares between three and four million dollars. The next question was, given the current NAV and dollar rate on the share price, do you have, have a thoughts to launch a substantial buyback, or would there be a better use of spare cash? Um, well, ultimately, the company's got to manage all parts of the capital structure, so bonds, shares, and bank debt, and clearly the expensive money at the moment are the bonds. So, um, and also, it's got to be able to grow and survive. So, it's a juggling match with several balls. So, the the shares are a part of it, uh, the bonds are a part of it, and growth is a part of it. And you clearly, you, you need to fuel all. All of those activities. Ken B asks, what level in inflation rate are you seeing on new ATR 32220 ATR aircraft? How is this reflected in existing fleet valuations over and above the normalising of asset revaluation? This is a question for Ian. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've also seen inflation jump um, in the last year, so we've increased our inflation estimate which we use for our residual values, which which forms part of our lease incumbent uh, valuation of the aircraft fleet. So we've, we've basically increased the near term, um, you know, inflation factors to, to match current rates of inflation. And, and then that trends back down to a, a sort of a long term 2% inflation factor. Well, we're, we're, hang on, we're way under if you read the newspaper, the inflation rates are three times what our inflation yeah, rate Yeah, I mean, we, we, we did this exercise before 30th of June, and I think what everybody's seen is that inflation has continued to, to increase since 30th of June. So. Yeah, we, we used published, um, the published numbers back in about May, and yes. clearly, the um, obviously, the published numbers now could be double or triple that. Um, next one, Keith B. Aircraft sales two ATR 72s for completion in October 22, not 23, as on slide. Uh, we have two available for sale and lease at the moment, correct? In 2022, we might have there might be an error on a slide. No, it's not. It's a, two are being two are in the process of being completed, and the last two Virgin aircraft uh, we're still trying to sell. Yeah, but that's in 2022. The health of sale of the, of the two that are currently for sale. Yeah, there is there is an error in slide slide nine that he's referring to, which is um, the second bullet point um, two ATR seventy two six hundred um, 
have been returned and sold with completion expected October 23. That should be October 2022. Jonathan P, is there any reason why the debt is not hedged? Well, it is. 90, 90% of the debt's hedged. Uh, Jonathan, the only bits that are not hedged are in the warehouse, which is what a warehouse does. Yeah, I mean, there's there's two components to unhedged debt. There's the, the, the warehouse loan, uh, which is about 8% of our, our debt. And then um, we also have two aircraft which are on floating rate leases. So we've kept the debt um, at floating rate because there's a natural hedge there, although we don't we don't call it hedged in the um, reporting. Uh, next question from Annie G. Which aircraft are currently unutilised and what are their plans to release or sell? Do these four aircraft represent the 130 million assets held for sale? Um, Rod, what have we got to place? Well, we have currently we have um, uh, 737, which still uh, needs to be needs to be placed, and we have two two ATRs. The last two are the Virgin ATRs, which uh, we're still uh, trying to place or sell, lease or sell. And the Myanmar one, although is the contract we have a commitment. Transition, transition. Um, assets have held for sale as of 30 June. There was a number of aircraft. You, you've seen a number of aircraft transactions occur and occur. In. Phil H, what was the size of the bond repurchase and what was the price, Ian? Um, so we, we repurchased $4.4 $4. $4 million dollars face value of notes at 75 cents. Brian C, generally speaking, the current market, where do you expect to utilize process from assets of sale? Investment, new aircraft or more debt pay down? Well, if you look at our current liabilities are relatively low and, uh, but we do have a growth, a small growth pipeline and we do have to pay our bond coupons and we do need to continue in our business. So there's not a sort of a, um, you know, we need to continue as normal. Right, Keith B, could you explain how low carbon emissions fuels are manufactured? Uh, well, the, the thesis um, is that the fossil fuels are obviously pulled out of the ground, processed and distributed whereas sustainable aviation fuels are manufactured product mainly from um, sustainable inputs. And the advantage from a, from a number of perspectives is it's a manufactured product. So people have offtake agreements and they're not exposed to the, you know, the, the oil price changing every day. Um, but at the moment, you know, the manufacturing is quite energy intensive and it's more, much more expensive than normal fuel. So clearly um, in the coming days, fuel efficiency is very, very important and new technology is very, very important. And aircraft engines will need to um, be, be changed to be able to support it. But fortunately, ATR's engines can and will be certified to support it in the very near term. Um, but other types will take a bit of time. Probably by the end of the decade, um, all aircraft types will be able to use it. Um, Phil H, why did assets help for sale jump so much? Uh, well, because we've sold, we've sold and transitioned lots of planes. We had, how many did we have to transition? 21 or something? Yeah, I mean, yeah, two, yeah. One way last, or last year, the number was based on three ATRs, which were sold in the in the last year. Um, and this year, the number is based on two A321s um, and two ATRs, which are currently available for sale. The next one is, can you expand more on the situation with customers less compliant with, compliant with payment terms? Ian? Oh yeah, I mean, you know, there's there's a, a number of customers um, Small number. who are in arrears, but I mean, I think the position has improved uh, compared to last year. I mean, if you look at um, you know some of our major customers, I mean, we spoke earlier about the 
uh, the conversion of, of some of those arrears into a, a into an interest bearing loan. Um, but yeah, I mean, we we regularly follow up with with customers over arrears, um, and then sometimes take steps um, to recover those arrears. There's a couple of um, claims out at the moment. Um, the next one uh, is from Moses and G. Should we expect higher pay now of secured debt in FY23? Um, probably not more than normal because it follows amortization. Um, unless you sell an aircraft. Unless you're yeah. trading an aircraft, but there's only a few we're trading in. Should we expect further material bond buybacks? Uh, well, no comment on that. There's probably not. From a modelling perspective, any guidance on revenues and EBITDA for 23 again from Mosin? No, not at the moment. Um, how much should we expect exactly in asset sale processes? We don't know the answer to that. James is asking, it was going great pre COVID, how are we doing now compared to pre-COVID? Well, we're recovering from COVID. Clearly, um, there's plenty of opportunity now because the manufacturers haven't manufactured that many aircraft during COVID. The airlines are recovering five or six or seven percent of all the world's aircraft are sort of lost forever into Russia. Um, and interest rates higher mean that airlines actually need leasing companies. So in theory, we're going into a fantastic time for aircraft leasing companies because what we provide is, is in demand. Um, and, and, and also inter quite interestingly, uh, with the technology change of low CO2, it means you can do it all again. You know, you've got to there's a lot of aircraft that will need to be replaced. So the whole aircraft leasing industry is going to be sitting there thinking we have a lot of work to do and a lot of opportunity <laughs> and there'll be a lot of lot of growth. So we're not there yet, but clearly um, it's a very opportunistic time. Um, Ken B, is there an opportunity to revisit spare engine support with a new engine type? It could have become a tool to attract and support more customers. Uh, the answer to that is probably not because airlines want um, aircraft and they often have their own arrangements around engines. Like there are people that have tried to set up pure leasing, uh, aircraft le engine leasing businesses and they don't seem to have had the, have the scale that they could have. Uh, Phil H, should legal professional fees come down or will it remain at recent levels. Well, Duncan's on the line, so why don't you yeah. answer that one? <clears throat> Thanks, Jeff. Um, well, during COVID, we, we did legal transactions with almost every uh, lessee and almost every bank, uh, often more than once. Um, so during the period, um, our external council fees were, were much higher than we would normally expect. Um, I mean, normally our fees are, are a, a portion of new tra of transactions that we do. Uh, but it have been extremely high during the COVID period and we do expect them to come down significantly uh, in the future. Um, JC says, with the expected influence from rents, what is the minimum of cash you need to hold? What are your priorities for excess cash? We have no excess cash. We like to hold over $100 million. <laughs> yeah, I think the minimum would be 100 Um Next slide. Brandon B, is a revised broken note? Yes, there are two or three. Canaccord have one, Davey have one, and WH Island have one. Charles C, Ovation's triple C credit, well, not triple C. Minus. We've been minus now, we've been upgraded. If you had issued debt today, what yield would it be required? And how is it compared to your asset? Well, I don't know how, I think the market's pretty tough for anyone at the moment. I see all the, um, it's a struggle on that one. Are there any more questions? 
Jeff, you've been very kind and you've read through every single question uh, that has come through from investors. If there are any other that we've uh, missed or whatever, obviously we'll make those available post today's call. Um, Jeff, thank you and to, to the team for updating investors this afternoon. I know investor feedback will be important to you all. I'll shortly redirect those on the call to give you their feedback. But Jeff, before doing so, I wonder if I may just ask you for a few closing comments. Uh, look, thank you so much for your support. I mean, clearly it's been a, a torrid time and there's it's still a lot of risk in the industry. Um, you know, there's wars, there's pandemics, um, and there's technology change around the CO2 stuff. So clearly there are plenty of risks, but at the moment it does seem to be that um, the fundamentals, which is passenger demand, is, is demonstrably there. You know, airlines, are, people want to travel, um, the airlines are recovering, and the ones that have survived will, will, will do well and therefore will do well. So thanks, thanks for your time, and please um, feel free to contact us with questions at any time, and we, we remain available. Thank That's you great. so much. That's great. Jeff, thank you very much indeed. Can I please ask investors on this call not to close this session as we'll now automatically redirect you for the opportunity to provide your feedback in all the management team can better understand your views and expectations. This only take a few moments to complete, but I'm sure will be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Aviation PLC, we'd like to thank you for attending today's presentation. May I wish you all a very pleasant afternoon. Thank you.